Now that Yuta has taken over Gojo's body, one of the craziest fights in the entire series is about to take place. A Gojo possessed by Yuta is about to have a climactic battle with Ryomen Sukuna, the strongest in history, but this fight will have one of the craziest endings to any fight in JJK, even crazier than Gojo vs Sukuna, and Gege's already foreshadowed and revealed this in the story. And although it seems obvious on who's gonna win this fight, I assure you, this fight will not go the way you expect it at all, and it will end in the craziest panel arguably in all of JJK. I just cannot wait to talk about this. Be sure to leave a like on the video, it helps out a ton, thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this. Less than 10% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you love JJK, I promise you, you won't regret subscribing. And of course, thank you to the special great members of the channel, it's always much appreciated guys. Alright, let's get right into this. So in the latest chapter of JJK, Yuta took over Gojo's body. It was a very controversial decision by Gege and a lot of people are calling it bad writing, a lot of people are calling it masterclass writing. It seems like this wild decision by Gege has split the fan base right down the middle with those who think it's great and those who think it's bad. Of course, if you've seen my previous video, you know where I stand, but today I am not here to discuss if this was a good decision, if this was bad writing. For this video, it doesn't matter at all. What we're going to be focused on is the future of JJK and if Yuta can actually beat Sukuna now that he has possessed the strongest of the modern day's body, Satoru Gojo. And of course, this video will be split into multiple parts. The first will be discussing how strong Yuta is in Gojo's body, which is actually crazy, and we'll also touch upon how strong Sukuna Kuna is right now. And the second part of the video, I will be telling you exactly how this fight will go down to a T. Alright, so first things first, Yuta's taken over Gojo's body. So, as we can see, he's got access to the six highs, which is wild, meaning he's got infinite cursed energy. Of course, he doesn't have a literal infinite amount, but it's more so the six highs actually making your efficiency and usage of cursed energy for anything you do so low that it's pretty much an infinitesimal point. So that's why it doesn't really matter if Yuta currently has the same amount of cursed energy that he has in his original body, or if he has the same amount as Gojo. And of course, he has access to the limitless curse technique, meaning he's got everything Gojo had. And this even goes for his domain expansion as he's got Gojo's domain, unlimited void. Now I've seen a lot of people confused saying, wait, if he just got Gojo's body, how is he using the body so well? I mean, the first thing he does when he's got Gojo's body is activate domain expansion, which is really weird when you consider the fact that it took Gojo years to awaken his domain expansion. I mean, even after he awakened against Toji, he didn't have a domain and a full year of training after that, he said, I still need to refine my domain more, implying that he did have a domain a year after the Toji fight, but it just wasn't refined. So how the hell does Yuta have a domain? Well, the answer is very simple. He has access to all of Gojo's memories now that he's taken his body. Of course, we saw this in action when Kenjaku did this to Gojo, where he speaks just like Geto did and had the exact same mannerism, speech pattern, and even spoke like him. And it's not just because he's in his body, it was literally how he spoke. And this even extended to when he was talking to other people, like when he was talking to Meimei. So it seems like when you possess someone's body, you get access to all of their memories as well. And this is very important because it means Yuta has access to all of the training and knowledge that Gojo had, so it's not just like with Yuji when he had Sukuna in his body, so his body had muscle memory of being in super special grade. It goes even beyond that, where he's got the actual body itself and he's got access to all of those memories, and that knowledge and also how to use that power. Meaning right now, Yuta is as strong as Gojo in every sense of the word. It's not just that he's got his body, he's also got his full knowledge and utility too. It's absolutely wild, and here's the craziest part. Yuta may be stronger than Gojo right now by a massive margin, and this depends on one thing. Does Yuta right now still have access to his copy curse technique? Because as Meme said, there's many possibilities as to what would happen when Yuta takes over Gojo's body. Maybe Kenjaku's technique is a one-time use and he'll keep it forever. Maybe Kenjaku's technique is one that needs to be activated every once in a while so he'll die eventually, or it could be possible that the body hop needs to be active all the time and the body hop will end after five minutes once Yuta's curse technique copy is over, which is a five minute time limit. Now if the latter option is too, what it means is that Yuta currently has copy activated and that's how he's activating Kenjaku's technique all the time. If that really is the case, then that means Yuta right now has copy, limitless, body hop, and he could have one entire other curse technique because as it was explained by Yuki and as we've seen by Kenjaku, you can have four curse techniques at any point. It seems like that's the max as Kenjaku in Shibuya, it was confirmed that he had four curse techniques and Yuki outright says you can have four curse techniques, so it's possible that for Yuta's fourth curse technique, you could have something like Jacob's Ladder or even Sukuna's Cleveness Mantle but I'm only saying that he may only have four if he doesn't still have Rika because we do see at least only one of his hands and there wasn't the ring that he uses when he's got Rika fully manifested. It could be possible now that Yuta is wearing the ring because again, he needs to have copy activated to keep himself in the brain. At least that's one of the possibilities. And the reason I say this is because very cleverly, the hand that Yuta always has Rika's ring on, at least before it's cut off by Sukuna, is the hand that's cropped out of the double page spread. So if he were to wear the ring, he would wear it on the hand that's off screen very sneakily by 
Gege, and this is not the first time Gege has done something like this very crafty of him, where he specifically hides a key detail right out of the panel that becomes important later on. He's done this before, so it wouldn't shock me if that's what he's doing now, or perhaps I'm just looking too into it and I'm losing my mind, which that's also true too. But all I'm saying is, even if Yuta doesn't have copy and he's just got Satoru Gojo's Six Sides and Limitless, he's still at a massive advantage, as I'll explain in the second part of the video. But if he has copy on top of that, this guy will scale far above Gojo, and I think he might be the strongest character, even stronger than Sukuna, if he has access to copy and he has access to Rika because he's got the ring on his finger. For those five minutes, he might truly be completely unstoppable. And of course, to briefly touch upon how strong Sukuna is, I'll keep it short since we already know, but his cursed energy seems to be at half capacity, his output is nerfed into the absolute dirt, reverse curse technique is still in the mud, his domain expansion should still have the binding vow limits, the 99 second limit. It could be possible that he makes another binding vow to make it longer. And of course he has his flames, but it's likely that he won't even be able to use the flames against this Gojo possessed Yuta, because as the narrator said, Yuta has the knowledge to beat Sukuna's domain, and if he does what Gojo did in the domain clash against Sukuna, as we know, Sukuna's flames will be locked away. Alright, now it's time to discuss why I think this fight will be an absolute wash in Sukuna's favor, as crazy as that sounds, isn't it? Because I just spent this whole video gassing Yuta and Gojo. Well, first things first, if you've been enjoying the video, leave a like, it helps out a lot, thank you, and subscribe if you haven't. But the second thing is, if it really is, like I said before, where he's only got the five minute time limit, well, what's gonna happen after those five minutes are up? Simply put, Yuta will just die because his copy is finished, and as was explained by Meimei, once the curse technique copy is over, so will the body hop, and it'll just be game over from there. It's also important to note that maybe Sukuna will have access to domain application because we did see when he was fighting Yuta, even when his domain was damaged, he was using simple domain, but again, domain application is completely different and more advanced, so it could be possible that he can't use it due to that part of the brain being damaged when he fought Gojo, but he may make some binding vows to allow himself to use it, just as he's making binding vows to allow himself to use domain expansion. Now, as for the fight itself, no matter to how you look at it, I do think Yuta is going to be dominating, especially for a decent while. This is just a common thing we see all the time in any fight in JJK. Funny enough, it's something that I call in multiple fights as they were happening weekly like Sukuna and Yorozu. There's always that beginning section when a character is completely dominating the villain. In this case, it's Sukuna, where usually it looks like, oh my god, this person can beat Sukuna, they're absolutely washing him. And it goes on for quite a while. I mean, this could even go on for a couple pages or even a chapter or two until, of course, just like always, Ryoma Sukuna comes out on top. And we see this formula played out when he was fighting Maki where Maki stabs him right in the heart and that entire chapter, Maki looked very good against Sukuna. I mean, she was not just fighting him evenly, but she was pushing him back. But of course, we get the next chapter and Sukuna just dominates her pretty badly. And we also see this when Yuta and Yuji fought Sukuna inside of the domain. Though I will say this was to a much lesser extent where they were dominating for almost the entire fight against him. But of course, right at the end, Sukuna pulls out the world ending slash and cuts Yuta right in half. It's very debated upon if this was the world ending slash or just enchanted slash, but that's up to your interpretation on what happened off screen. Now the way I see this fight going with Yuta and Sukuna, as I explained earlier in the video, Yuta is going to do the same tactic that Gojo did where he made his domain the size of a tennis ball. And as the narrator said, Satoru Gojo has already shown Yuta how to do this, and I don't even think he's referring to Yuta actually seeing it when he was watching it through Mei Mei's Crows. I think he's actually talking about seeing it through Gojo's own memories, because seeing it is one thing, but the only reason Gojo was able to do that is because he was in the prison realm. It was because he had that experience, so that's why Gojo could do it, and of course, Yuta now has access to all of Gojo's memories and experiences, so that's why Yuta can do it too. So because of this, Sukuna will need to shrink his domain and possibly do the same binding vows that he did when he was fighting Gojo to break it on the outside. But there's many issues that come with this. One, Sukuna and Gojo clash for three minutes before Sukuna is able to destroy it from the outside, and two, Sukuna can only keep his domain up for 99 seconds. Now, it could be possible that there's going to be other factors in play, such as maybe Yuta's domain just isn't as strong, and I'm overestimating him having Gojo's memories, or maybe Sukuna's gonna make another binding vow to increase that 99 seconds to 180 seconds, which is what he needs to break Gojo's domain from the outside. And as to what this binding vow is even going to be, it would need to be something pretty crazy, but I wouldn't put it past Sukuna, specifically I should be saying Gege, to just give Sukuna a free pass with some binding vow and just let him do what he wants. And I've seen people say now that Sukuna doesn't have Mahoraga, he's gonna get smoked by Yuta because Sukuna needed Mahoraga to beat Gojo. And to those that are saying this, I want to remind you, do you not remember why Sukuna had Mahoraga from the very beginning? It was specifically so he would get a world ending slash that can bypass the infinity, which he currently has. Sukuna doesn't need Mahoraga anymore, he can bypass Yuta's infinity just by activating the world ending slash. Of course, a big issue comes in, Sukuna can't use the world ending slash right now because he needs two opposing hands. Right now, he does have two hands, but both of those hands are the same side. What he needs are two opposing hands to make the Enmuten hand sign, which is a condition to activate the world ending slash. And I do think 
Yuta can actually get his reverse curse technique back. And why do I think this? Well, I think it depends on if Yuji is going to be caught inside of the domain alongside Sukuna. If Yuta activates his domain expansion and it only captures Sukuna, then I think Sukuna is just going to be pretty screwed. But if it doesn't capture Yuji and Toto because Yuta doesn't want them to get hit by Unlimited Void or maybe it's going to give them some time to rest up, Sukuna can take those three minutes of not getting hit by Yuji to restore his reverse curse technique. He may even hit some black flashes on Yuta inside of the domain clash to restore his output. This may be a way of him getting back his hands that he lost and this may take place over the three minutes of the domain clash and once he's got both of his hands he's going to look at Yuta and say it's game over, activate the world ending slash and chop him in half. But do remember, Gojo was caught off guard because Sukuna didn't even do any of the conditions. Remember he made a binding vow to just fire off at Gojo instantaneously and Gojo wasn't aware of the world ending slash. Even if Gojo saw the dismantle coming, why would he dodge it when he's got the infinity up as we saw throughout the fight? He never needed to dodge it once when his infinity was up. So Yuta's not going to be caught like a liar with his pants down and his hands on fire against Sukuna. He is going to be aware of Sukuna. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> he's going to be aware of Sukuna's world ending slash. No matter how you put it, I just think Yuta's going to be dominating Sukuna throughout this fight. And I will say it's going to be pretty cool to see true form Sukuna up against Gojo because this was a massive complaint I had. That we never got to see true form Sukuna against Gojo. But the way I see it going is it just simply being the simplest choice and also the easiest choice for Yuta to take over and that's Yuta even if he's stronger than Sukuna because Sukuna's got 50 trillion nerfs and maybe Yuta has access to copy Rika and all his copy techniques alongside Gojo's Six Eyes and Limitless. But simply put, he might just die after those five minutes and that's how Sukuna wins. And I want to make a crazy prediction to end this video. I think that Sukuna is going to eat Gojo right here, right now. Because my all time theory that I made even before Gojo vs Sukuna started, you can check that tweet, was that Sukuna will eat Gojo to end the fight. And I think right now it could be very possible because now he's in his true form, unlike when he was in Megami's body. And we know that when Sukuna eats people, he eats them with his stomach mouth that he's got now in his true form. And this would be very tactical to just get rid of Gojo's body because not destroying Gojo's body led to Gojo coming back. So why would you make that mistake again? Just eat the guy right there. It makes sense within the story. It makes sense why he didn't do it before. There's a big tactical motive to do it now. And it was also hinted at that Sukuna wanted to eat Yuta when he said that the possessed brat will be the main dish. I think it's been foreshadowed very heavily and I think that would be absolutely wild. But let me know how you guys think this fight is going to go in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear your takes. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, up a ton. Thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality JJK content just like this. Like I said in the intro, less than 10% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you love JJK, I assure you, you won't regret subscribing. And of course, thank you to all the channel members as well. It is always much appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. But that's all from me. Have a great day and take care.